Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand. Welcome to another video. I'd like to think those of you who follow me here do so because you want open, honest debates. You want to arrive at your own conclusions. You don't want things shoved in your face. You want to live in reality. And you want to hear things that are not being reported in our corrupted, corporate-owned mainstream media. Now, I've made some videos over the last few months regarding the terrible and tragic situation with regards to heart disease and heart attacks, sudden cardiac death, which are at unprecedented levels. It's a truly awful topic, and we need to get to the bottom of why this is the case and start addressing some root causes. Well, over the last several days, we've had a new expert opinion on why this may be the case, and it has been pushed relentlessly by several media outlets. Let me share with you this story. So this was published in the Daily Express, which is a UK publication, within the last week or so. Where you live could be increasing your risk of sudden cardiac arrest, according to a study. Particles of air pollution, known as PM2.5, could result in sudden death, according to experts. Conducted by the University of Singapore, the study found that tiny particles of air pollution could trigger heart attacks and cardiac arrests. The particles, known as PM2.5, have been linked to a range of health problems. The study involved over 18,000 cases of out-of-hospital cardiac arrests. The team found that 492 of these cases could, I stress could, have been caused by PM2.5. Although this is a small number, it demonstrates the power of air pollution. So it seems like they're linking two separate issues there together and finding a relationship, air pollution and heart attacks. So where else was this reported? Well, as well as media outlets, scientific publications as well. This is Science Alert, a supposedly reputable publication. Tiny particles in the air may trigger sudden heart attacks, study suggests. Nearly a decade's worth of data collected across Singapore suggests increased concentrations of tiny particles in the air can trigger cardiac arrests, making the need to cut air pollution levels around the world even more urgent. So again, they're linking two issues here, air pollution levels with heart attacks. So one of my golden rules that I've said many times before, whenever you see a study in the mainstream media or they talk about a study, the wise thing to do, I know this is difficult for people who are not in medicine or science to interpret fully, but if you even have a remote interest, it is very well worth always going to the actual study itself. Usually there's a link at the bottom to the actual study. If a media publication is worth its salt, it will have a link to the actual study so you can read it yourself. So let's take a look at it. Here it is in the Lancet Public Health, which is a reputable medical journal. Air quality and the risk of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest in Singapore, a time series analysis. So not the strongest of studies. And I have the abstract here, in the interest of time, I will go to the main points. I have put the link to the actual study down below so you can go and look at it yourselves. Findings. We extracted data for 18,131 cases of OHCA, that's out of hospital cardiac arrest. The median age was 65 years old. 35.8% were female, 64.2% were male. And they have a mix of the local ethnicities here, Chinese and Indian. And as for the interpretation, increases in PM2.5 concentration were associated with an initial increased risk of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and a subsequent reduced risk from three to five days after exposure. That's really strange and very interesting that there is a subsequent reduced risk, suggesting a short-term harvesting effect. A decrease in PM2.5 concentrations could reduce population demand for emergency health services. And the next golden rule, perhaps Dr. Dan's golden rule of all, and it gives me no pleasure in saying this, sadly in our world of science, medicine and academia, which is so financially tainted and corrupted by conflicts of interest, perhaps the best thing you can do is go to the bottom of the study and read the conflicts of interest and the financial disclosures. And sadly, that will often tell you a lot about obviously who is funding the study, but why a particular study result may be being pushed. It's really sad. In fact, often it's a good thing to read this first before the study. So let's take a look at who is funding this study. 
So it lists a number of corporations and financial interests here. The Zoll Medical Corporation, a few other medical companies, medical device companies it looks like, and Global Healthcare SG, a commercial entity that manufactures cooling devices. And of course, we have to do the research and do the digging around ourselves because we have a mainstream media and journalists that will never do their job. So a bit of research into these particular corporations will tell you that the Zoll Medical Corporation manufactures devices for cardiac resuscitation. They are also involved in ventilators, air filtration systems, and the other companies listed are involved in devices related to managing cardiac arrests. So the obvious question is, will a study like this and pushing this particular result benefit them financially in any way? Will people buy more of their products and do they have a vested interest in talking about air pollution and that particular particle? Now this link may not be as outrageous as some of the studies that I see from the United States where the financial conflict of interest is so blatant and obvious. Of course, we have to have our guard up. That is the nature of the world. And the crazy thing as well about the current state of academia, medicine, and science in particular, is that those people who do the digging around, who ask the obvious questions related to financial interests, are often the ones who get piled upon, not the actual people and entities that are part of the financial conflict of interest. Isn't that crazy? You get in trouble for asking questions about if a system could be corrupt. But the potential corrupt entity gets in no trouble whatsoever and there are no consequences. That is the stage that we are at. Quite weird and quite Orwellian. But coming back to the main topic here, we have an absolute tragedy on our hands with soaring rates of heart disease, heart attacks, sudden cardiac death, we are hearing stories all the time on the news. And as I've said before, I have never seen a time when so many stories are out there about young people who are dropping dead. What is going on here? Well, as I said a couple of videos ago, we have had soaring rates of heart disease across the Western world. Now, I know this story was from Singapore, but of course it was published across the Western world. So it had a large audience in the United States and United Kingdom who are having their attention diverted to issues which are very unlikely a major player. Now, it's probably a good thing to reduce air pollution, but is that really the cause of heart attacks? The rates of which have been going up for a long time with further steep increases increases over the last couple of years due to unique pandemic factors. But we should be focusing on the right things, the root causes. And as for the Western world, especially countries like the US and UK, our lifestyles, our terrible lifestyles and the tainted food supply in our country has been a major part of promoting heart disease. This has been going on for decades and we aren't really focused on it. I've touched before on what it is about the food supply in terms of ultra processed foods and sugars and I'll talk much more about this in future videos but we cannot neglect the elephant in the room. This is such an important topic and our media should not be going off into tangents on this particular issue. We have young people that are dropping dead right now, sudden cardiac death, hearing these stories all the time. We should be focused on real cardiac health and well-being. And that's where the minds of our authority should be asking the right questions, getting to the bottom of everything, and really caring about the true health and well-being of the population. Thanks everyone for listening, Dr. Sunil Dan. Let me know your thoughts down below. By the way, I think this was a very weak study indeed, and for this narrative to be pushed across the media is utterly ridiculous. So let me know your thoughts on that study and everything I just said. Do hit the subscribe button for more similar videos in the future. Also hit the bell button so you get notified when I make more videos. Remember, modern mainstream culture will make you very sick very fast. Two of the best things you can do for your health are to cut out ultra-processed foods and sugars. Sadly, a lot of healthcare and medicine has become very corrupted indeed, and fewer things are to be more cherished than our freedom. Also come follow me on my uncensored platform, Locals.com. That link is down below where we have more open, honest, interesting discussions away from this environment of big tech censorship and silencing. Really sad I need to say that in the United States, but I do. We will chat again very soon.